Good morning and welcome to the sermon this morning. I want to speak this today about generosity. Maybe in a little different way than we're used to speaking about it, but I want to just for a moment look at a verse from the Old Testament and then the New Testament because I want to look at heart attitude today. And so we start in Deuteronomy chapter 15 and the Lord says this to to the people through his prophet. He says, be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year of canceling debts is near, so that you do not show ill will towards the needy among your fellow Israelites and give them nothing. They may then appeal to the Lord against you, and you will be found guilty of sin. Give generously to them, and do so without a grudging heart. Then, because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed towards your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. Now we jump to Luke 11 from verse 40. And it says, You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But now as for what is inside you, in other words, what must you be like inside? Be generous to the poor and everything will be clean for you. Verse 42 says, Woe to you Pharisees! Because you give a tenth of your mint, rue, and all the other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without having the former undone. Now, 2 Corinthians, we read this. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So what are we looking at here? In all of these cases, God is addressing the heart attitude of a giver. It's taken for granted you must be generous and you should give. But what does generosity entail? Is it just the amount? And obviously that's not the case. You see, generosity almost always requires sacrifice. In other words, it means giving up something of value. So when you begrudgingly toss that two rand coin at the car guard and you feel, oh, I have to give him something, that's not generosity. But if you see his need and you hand over that note that hurts, that might very well might be generosity. <clears throat> generosity is always about heart attitude and not the amount. Generosity requires a different view of people and the world and life. As a matter of fact, generosity requires looking at all of these from God's point of view. How does God see people? How does God respond to needs? How does God see the things around us? Generosity is born out of gratitude and a deep understanding that all that I have, all that I am, comes from God. You see, if you're very proudful and you think that all you have comes because you've worked so hard, you deserve it, and nobody's getting any of it, you can never have a generous spirit. But it's when you, in deep dependence, understand that God has made it possible, that God is the provider, and that you have been the recipient of the generosity of God, it becomes so much easier to be generous with others. And it starts with soft eyes. How you look at someone. Do you look at someone with condemnation? Do you look down at the poor and the destitute and the guy in the corner who looks so bad? Do you look down at the person who's been sequestrated and lost everything he has? 
Do you look down at people who have less than you? Or do you look with soft eyes? Do you see with compassion? Can you, in your heart, climb into their shoes and feel their loss and their pain and their suffering? See, Jesus did that. That's why Jesus became a man. He came and experienced our pain, our loss, our frustration. He came and experienced what sin does to us. And he came and he dealt with it. Generosity often requires a death to self. In other words, it means that you will do things that you would not necessarily normally do. That you will have attitudes that are not necessarily yours. And that you will do things that are in detriment to yourself for the sake of other people. Choosing to be the least for the sake of others. See, generosity is more than just putting some money in the collection plate at church. Tossing it in the box at the back. It's more than giving to a beggar on the street. It's, it's more than donating your old stuff to the needy. There was a time when I was at seminary when, uh, and we were very poor. All the students who lived on site were extremely poor. Young married couple just having a baby. And uh, we would often get a plastic bag with groceries. And uh, when you'd open it up, very excited. Most times it was cans that were dented and rusted and swollen. And many of them didn't have a label on. So every meal was a mystery. Uh, and the mystery wasn't so much what was inside the can, but the mystery was what sort of food poisoning were you going to get this week? People had donated the stuff they wouldn't dare to eat for themselves, thinking that that was generosity and taking care of God's servants. I sometimes wonder how God viewed that. And while we were grateful to be able to eat, it made me wonder about, would you, do we give only stuff away that we don't want? Are we only generous with the stuff that we're too scared to eat for ourselves? Stuff that's become redundant? Stuff that is torn and broken? Do we only give clothes that have holes in them? Generosity asks more of that. Generosity builds people up. It betters their situation. And it costs me something. You see, generosity comes into its own when it's mixed with love. And that's why I say it comes with soft eyes. You have to look at people through the eyes of Jesus and love them and then want to meet some need or other. Now it's hard with people you meet only for a second on the street to that beggar. But understanding that even that person is loved of God and to give something. But it goes far beyond that. Let's look at some things about generosity. I want to mention five quickly today. We have to be generous in acceptance. <clears throat> generosity is not just stuff and money. Generosity is in with attitudes and how we deal with people and how we act. And so generosity in acceptance means that I make room for others in the world and in my life, despite their faults. In other words, I make room for even those that the world despises. I make room for the, for the poor and the downtrodden. I make room for the suffering. Let me ask you just a few basic questions. When you see suffering on TV, do you just switch the channel? Oh, another disaster, another flood, another tornado. Or does it move your heart? How do you view strangers who are looking for a better life? This is a hard one. Because sometimes our politics interfere with how our hard attitude should be as a believer. How do you see refugees, migrants and displaced people? Where does xenophobia come from? Does it come from love and tolerance? Or does it come from hate and fear and self-preservation? Making no room for other people in that which God has provided for me in the relative safety of my home, town, or my country, or the systems that we have in place. I want to remind you something, or something. At the age of, just before we became two, as a baby, Jesus became a refugee. 
suddenly there were soldiers everywhere killing, slaughtering all the boys under the age of two. And suddenly the family had to move and they fled all the way to Egypt. And so for quite some time, Jesus lived as a refugee in a foreign land because his life was threatened. If you read the news, you'll see that now, right now in Capo Delgado, up in northern Mozambique, people are fleeing their homes. Just last week, 50 people had their heads cut off in the middle of a soccer field just because they would not do what radical Muslims wanted them to do. Many of them Christian. And so they're running away for their lives. What's your heart attitude towards that? Do you feel for them? When the appeal comes and says, let's help these people, will you rise to the occasion? Or is it just another disaster? And blame someone for it. These are real issues. But how we deal with them comes from how our heart attitude is. How we see people. How does God see those people who died on that soccer field? If they were believers, they are the overcomers who have suffered for their faith. And those who manage to escape are his children in need, possibly of your help. This week, there was an incredible hurricane, a second in two weeks that hit Nicaragua. People are displaced, suffering. Will you have a generous heart? Will you do something? We also need to be generous in forgiveness, secondly. You know, we all get hurt from time to time. We all have to deal with those who sin against us. And how we deal with them is particularly important. Because we have to remember that our own sin and how God has dealt with us. Forgiveness from a generous heart is not transactional. It's not a case of, I'll forgive if someone is really sorry or apologizes enough or shows enough remorse or compensates me sufficiently. Imagine if God had to deal with you that way for every sin you committed. We need to see sinners the way God sees sinners. Uh, just a reminder how God sees us. We need to be abundantly generous with forgiveness because we're one of those sinners. And we go to God at a moment's notice and say, Oh Lord, I've blown it. I've done that again. I'm so sorry. And we expect to walk away with forgiveness because we're dealing with a God who is generous in his forgiveness. We need to do the same to those that sin against us. Again, it comes from how we see ourselves, how we see the world, how we see other people, and how we need to see it from God's perspective and have a heart change. See, I haven't spoken about an amount yet. It's not about how much you give or how you give. It's about your heart. That brings me to the next point, and that is that we need to be generous with our time. Time is maybe the most precious commodity we have. And I promise you, it doesn't matter what herbs and spices you're eating or what supplement you're taking, what exercise you're doing, and you're thinking you're banking time to live longer, there's no guarantee. It's one of those things that we do our best, but we have no guarantee. And so it's a precious commodity. And it's possibly the one thing that we're the most stingy with often. And it's one of those areas we need to be generous with. And it comes to us in all sorts of ways. So you're on your way to the office. You're late for an important meeting. The traffic is terrible. And as you creep forward to that robot or traffic light, and there's a side cars trying to get in the side. And as you look, you see there's a line of cars and they're squeezing and they're trying to slip in. And the car in front of you just pushes forward. He's not giving anybody space. And you sit there and you look at this lady going, please. And you think, oh, okay, I'll let her in. But I'm late. And so there's a little gap and she starts to slide in. Now you're angry because she's wasting your time. And she finally gets in and the car behind her tries to get in as well. 
So what do you do? Are you generous? Or do you give that guy the death stare and look at him and say, only one. Generosity making room for only one. Uh, I always wonder, what if I was the second guy and I'm just as late as you? We need to be generous. And a part of that hard attitude is to relax in life. As I said, it's to live and let live. It's to, to be generous, to open up, to allow other people. And even the dumb guy who then squeezes in and almost causes an accident. Without climbing on your horn and blowing it and carrying on, how's your heart? We need to be like Jesus. We need to be forgiving. We need to make room for people. And we need to also make room and time for God's things. And listen, let me ask you, if you did a test today, and you took a piece of paper and you write down, you go and decide, how much in my day did I really give to others or to the kingdom of God where there's no benefit necessarily to me, but I gave it because someone needed it? You might find it's actually very little. I'm not talking about washing the dishes for the family, part of your daily task. I'm not talking about working so that your people, your family can eat. Uh, I'm talking about people who can give you nothing back, who needed some time, who needed some of your energy, who needed some of your input in some way that can bring you no benefit. That's generosity. And we should be looking out for that in our families, in our community, in our church. Looking for opportunity to serve people who desperately need some of our time. And then, of course, in the kingdom, to grow the kingdom. We need to give up ourselves, lay ourselves down, give up that precious commodity called time. Be generous with it. Finally, we need to, not finally, sorry, the fourth point, generous, generosity as far as possessions are concerned. Are you a hoarder or a giver? Uh, do you have possessions or do your possessions have you? Now, let me state from the beginning. You're allowed to own stuff as a believer. You are allowed to enjoy what God has given you. You can have nice things without having guilt. This is not about not having stuff. You're welcome. And God blesses us so that we can enjoy what he gives us. But are you also then generous with what he gives you? You see, this need requires an understanding of how God works with possessions. God gives. When we're generous, he replaces. He blesses us in heaven because we're building up treasures. But this is not about giving to get. This is about looking around you and when someone needs something, willing to give it up for their sake, to build them up, to bring them into a better place, to help them in life, to share possessions. And this, of course, would be a sermon on its own if I took the time to mention all the things that come to mind. But again, what's your hard attitude towards possessions? You see, it's so easy for possessions to possess us and to dominate us when it should be the other way around. Possessions are there for our enjoyment, but they're also there to give and to have other people enjoy them. We're moving and we're living in boxes at the moment and we're packing. And one of the things we're doing is discovering how much stuff we have that we haven't looked at for years. It's in a cupboard. It's a nice to have, but we're not going to use it. And to put it in a box and say, this is giving. We're just going to give this to someone. We have so much that we don't use anyway. There's nothing wrong with it. But why have it if you're never going to use it? Someone could use it. Be blessed by it. We also need to be generous with our money, of course. Now, let me just jump in here and say something. What is wrong with the prosperity gospel? The prosperity gospel says, if you give, you will get. If you sow so much seed, you'll get 10 times or 100 times. And what that gospel has done, that theology, is it's turned... It's made generosity transactional. It's a, it's a transaction. It's a deal. Lord, I'm paying for a service. If I give this, then I know God's going to give me that. And God, you better do it because you said so. 
Well, no, he didn't. That's just what some people have twisted the word to say. Prosperity gospel means you're making a deal with God. Or you think you have to pay off your debt to God. That by giving, you are paying for what Jesus did for you. That's not a grateful heart. That's a transaction. Some people think they're buying in favor with God. You can get blessing by giving. None of this is true. And this is not what God desires of us. But he does desire a generous heart. Yes, we also give money. Where? Well, we, we give it to church. We give it to missions. We give it in the kingdom. We give it to individuals. We give to the poor. You say, well, there's nothing left. No, there'll always be something left. More than enough. But it's your attitude. It's again how you're looking at life and at people. When you love people and you love someone, you see a need and you meet it. That's generosity. Sometimes generosity can get radical. And some people have the gift, the, the spiritual gift of giving, where they give beyond what makes sense. Not everybody has the gift, but we all have the responsibility to give. When we do it, let's do it with a good attitude. Let me ask a question again. How much do you tip? Do you sit there and work out the exact 10% and then tip that lady who's working hard for a living in a very difficult job, trying to please you. That sounds like the Pharisee Jesus mentioned, who weighs out the herbs and the spices and makes sure that he gives his tithe, but not a cent more. And his heart is doing it begrudgingly. Or oh, you're generous. You're being blessed. You're eating out. Can you give a bit more? Have you ever given someone a hand up in life? Someone needs to go and get a license but can't afford lessons, but needs a license to get a job, to get somewhere in life. Have you ever thought of paying that? Have you ever thought of that student studying for the ministry who can't pay study fees? Or that person who needs to qualify in a certain way to get the job? Making a contribution, helping them up in life, not just a handout. Making a good investment in people, that's generosity. Making sure that the church has what it needs to do the job. Not begrudging the pastor his salary, but lovingly trying to bless him. Those are the things we, we wish for ourselves. That someone would treat us that way when we're in need. And that's exactly what God is asking of you today. Is have that attitude. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. May God bless you. My prayer for you is that you would pray for the right heart. And again, it has nothing to do with the amount. It has everything to do with your heart. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, help us make investments in the kingdom and in people. Give us the right heart attitude. Help us to love people, all people, from the refugee to the, to the illegal alien, to the, to the neighbor next door, to the guy on the road, to the taxi that pushes in front of me, to my fellow believer in church. Give me your heart, give me your mind, give me your generosity, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you.